everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike here, the DRF race of the day for Saturday, October the 14th. One of my favorite races of the year. It seems like it's competitive and features some really good horses. It's the grade one Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup, race number nine at Keeneland. Let's take a look at this field. Some nice three-year-old fillies going a mile and an eighth on the turf. We've got 12 in the body of the race. The 13, Freydis the Red, is the also eligible, and the number four, Marge. Classic winner, winner of the thousand guineas last time out, is back off a bit of a layoff for Godolphin. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what she does uh, here, Dan, coming off of that one thousand guineas, which was a super performance. Her, her form prior to that was was good. It was certainly maybe you would want to say really good. She took it to another level the last time we saw her. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. There are several European entrants in here, so it's a great unknown as to where they'll all land. The number nine, Heavenly Sunday, though, does appear to be the pace setter. That is her preferred running style. Prerequisite won the Wonder Again stakes three starts back on the lead. I'd expect her to be close as well. Yeah, I won't argue too hard with the pace projector. It will be, there's a several Europeans uh, shipping over for this race. That'll be interesting to see what kind of positions they wind up in. And I think, uh, you know, most notable among those is that morning line favorite, Marge, who um, has shown really, really good tactical speed. That thousand guineas seemed like it was run at a pretty solid pace. She was right up there throughout. A horse with the tactical steep speed to make her own trip is the number one mission of joy. You won the grade three regret at Churchill Downs going a mile and an eight, three starts back in pretty fast time, fast enough time that she was favored in her two subsequent races, and she just didn't get the job done in either one of them. Last time out in the Virginia Oaks, Mike, was just sort of an even effort. Yeah, I didn't I didn't love that performance uh, from her last time. I didn't see a huge excuse along the way uh, in the running of that race. We'll see if she can bounce back with a better performance here. I don't care about the race two back necessarily. Maybe the mile and a quarter isn't really what she wants. Um, I liked her races prior to those last two, Dan. Now she's really got something to prove. Not only hasn't she run great in her last two races, this is a way, way tougher race. Although she didn't run great in the Virginia Oaks, she finished ahead of a horse that came back to run second in the grade three way against older horses with a 91 buyer last week. The two is Elusive Princess. She is group one placed in France and she sure caught everything that she likes in her North American debut, the Saratoga Oaks, run through a driving rainstorm on a heavy turf course, and she got a great in-out trip as well. She got a great uh, trip in this race, a great ride in this race from Flavia and Pratt. She also happens to really run through the stretch of this race. She hammers this field, Dan, um, got to the far outside in the stretch and just runs away from these horses, um, kind of like she was expected to do. She didn't win any of her prior three starts over in France. She ran great in every one of those races, though, came over with a big reputation, and she did not disappoint at Saratoga. Is it the soft ground, though? If the ground is firmer at Keeneland, are you concerned? Uh, I'm not going to be concerned about it right now, Dan. I mean, we'll see. Maybe it will be a big issue for her, but uh, she just looks to me like a, a filly of quite a bit of talent. And in that the Saratoga Oaks, she'd be two next out dirt winners, now based at Fair Hill with Arno de la Cour. The three is Safine, a horse that didn't fire her best shot last time out in the dueling grounds Oaks, where she was kind of up close to a solid pace and just might not have cared for that Kentucky Downs turf course. Winner of the pucker up, two starts back at Ellis going a mile and an eighth. Uh, I really wish I was impressed more with that performance, but she does have tactical speed. I don't care about her last race. Her her form prior to that was pretty good. They're not fast races. I would argue she should should have been on a three race winning streak going into that that most recent start. She got really unlucky in the Teppan uh, three starts back. I don't know that any of those races make her a strong contender in here, but her overall form is pretty good. Four is Maj, who is a good two-year-old, group two winner overseas, but she's now won three in a row, including the 1,000 guineas. And not only was her performance excellent, but the horse she beat, Tahira, came back to win the Irish 1,000, the Coronation, and the Matron. Three group one races in a row. So we know that Maj can step. This layoff has to be a little bit of a concern. It appears that they're using this race as a springboard to one of the Breeders' Cup races, whether it's the mile or the filly and mare turf. Yeah, again, it'll be interesting to see how how she how well she runs out of that one thousand guineas. It, it felt like a real uh, gut wrencher for her, Dan. But she she defeated and held off a really really good horse. They put an acre of ground on the rest of that field. Um, and again, she was up close to a pretty solid pace the entire way there. I mean, 
all around, it was a super strong performance. I don't even know that I would like her that much based on any of her other races. But off of that last one, if she runs that well in here, she's the horse to beat. Note that she will be stretching out to a mile and an eighth for the first time. She's yet to race past a mile. The five Be Your Best is on a six-race losing streak, but she's been in good form in Southern California. Let's watch her last start when shipped out for the Del Mar Oaks. She just ran into the best three-year-old turf filly in Southern California. You're going to watch Anna Set explode up the inside and win this race. Be Your Best stays to her task to finish second. Anna Set would come back and run second against elders in the grade one rodeo drive last week with a 91 buyer she ran okay in this race again be your best i'm a fan of this horse dan um i just don't she's improved slightly as a three-year-old but uh, boy, I, I really thought she was good at two and i don't know that she's improved as much as i um expected her to so far this year i don't want to knock her i'm a big fan of hers um she's going to be a big price in this race but this another one it feels like a really tough spot for her. The, the number six lindy has also done some good things overseas second in the french 1000 and he's ran in the french oaks here's her north american debut for brendan walsh and boy for this kind of money at kentucky downs only catching three horses that's a good deal for lindy who is odds on and took advantage of this european style configuration it kind of looked like a, a little bit of a paid workout here, Dan. She just sat over behind these uh, two horses on the lead, just waiting to go. They took her wide at the top of the stretch, and she breezes past them. Never had to get down to serious business uh, to win that race. It feels like a perfect prep to me coming into a much tougher race this time. Another one with form over in France that is really, really strong. That, that Philly that she ran into in her prior pre-starts, she's real good. I think the sleeper in this race is the number seven, Sounds of Heaven, who was good enough to finish third, only beaten a length to the aforementioned Tahira in the coronation uh, two starts back. And then last time out in the pre-Rothschild against older horses, she A, she caught soft ground, and B, she was facing some of the better turf milers in Europe. The winner of that race came back to win the Prix Jean Romanet, a group one, then was second in a group one in England. The third place finisher came back to win a group one as well. So back in with three-year-old fillies Mike and very progressive. Yeah, all those things are true. Just got in way over her head last time, Dan. I, I'll just say this: her, she's very lightly raced. Her her form is obviously very good. Nothing wrong with her coronation uh, two starts back, but she got a really good trip in that race. She had every chance to win. She was only beaten a length, but there was never a point in the stretch of that race where it looked like she was going to win. And she was just really no match at the end. She ran fine in there. I think she has to run better against this field. The Queen figures to be the highest price of the North American imports. She's 10 to 1 on the morning line. She picks up an American-based jockey in Luis Saez. This horse was a Group 3 winner last time out in France. The fourth place horse came back to win a Group 3. A couple of others from that race came back to place in Group 3 competition. But she's going to be stepping up. Some of her uh, European counterparts have faced better horses over there. They have. They're coming out of better races, to be sure. Um, we'll see how much she can improve in this race. Overall, I just think you just have to respect um, how consistent she is, Dan. And she just she just shows up. She runs her race every single time. It feels like it might not quite be good enough against some of these horses. Um, but I just really respect that uh, that she's very consistent and she's going to be a great price in here. Speaking of a great price, you're going to get a great price on the speed of the race, the number nine Heavenly Sunday, and you're going to get a great price on Brad Cox and Florent Giroux, who teamed up to win the Spinster last week with Idiomatic, its top-notch connections. The question is, is Heavenly Sunday good enough and does she want to go nine furlongs? Last time out in the Lake Placid, she really never got much of a breather in that race at Saratoga, Mike. I wish I liked the Ellis Park race, two starts back a little better although I think a Jaguar is okay. I do too. Um, I, yeah, I, I can't really add too much to that, Dan. Um, she ran fine, I guess, in the top and two back. I didn't think, you know, she had a huge excuse there. And again, it's at least worth pointing out the horse that finished third in there, Safine, was back in here. She ran the best race that day and just got really unlucky in the stretch to not get clear. When this really won three starts back, she took the grade two Edgewood. They just let her walk on the lead that day with no pressure. And I, There's not a ton of pace in this race, but I doubt they're going to just let her control. Tread Brown trains the 10 and the 11. Liguria won the wild applause. Uh, three starts back, going a mile at Belmont, although I wasn't sure I loved that field. In the Lake George, she caught yielding going. Last time she was running on a little bit at the end, I think she needs to run a career best. Yeah, I don't love uh, that that most recent start that she's coming out of there. That wasn't a particularly good field, I didn't think, and it wasn't a particularly strong performance. Um, 
I don't know, man. I, I'm starting to wonder how good uh, this filly actually is. She's run some good races, but I don't think she's run one yet that's going to make me want to better against this field. 15 to 1 for Brown on the morning line for Liguria, the 11 prerequisite. 20 to 1 on the morning line for Brown and Arad Ortiz. Wired him in the wonder again going this distance, going a mile and an eighth, three starts back. Almost stole the Belmont Oaks two back. The Lake Placid last time I just out sprinted to the early lead, Mike. Maybe a mile and a 16th at this point is a little bit short for her. I think they're going to get aggressive with her, and there's a chance she's right in the thick of things when they turn for home. I look at her the exact same way. I'm not quite convinced that she's necessarily good enough, Dan, but uh, she'd be one of the Americans that I'd want to use maybe somewhere in this race. I like her getting a little more distance to work with. I think they will go forward with her in this race. And if she improves just a little bit, she could be around at the end. Marcassi, Javier Castellano, they got the 12 Papilio. They scored with Fev Rover in the EP Taylor last week. And things to like about Papilio, she's very, very honest. She's going to make a late run. She really likes Keeneland. She showed that when she won the app. Appalachian. And last time out, she made a run in the Saratoga Oaks, but maybe that soft turf course played to the European elusive princess and not to Papilio, although she started her career in Ireland. Yeah, listen, there, uh, there are plenty of excuses to go around for this horse in her most recent four starts, Dan. I mean, even last time, she actually ran really well behind elusive princess in the, in the uh, Saratoga Oaks. She's just not as good as that horse, um, but it was another good performance. Two starts back, a terrible stumble at the start, left her way out of position. Three starts back, totally blocked in the stretch with nowhere to go. I mean, her form is actually better than it looks right now. She just happens to be in another really tough race from a tough post. The 13 freight is the red is the also eligible. But if she happens to get into the race, it looks like she's coming into this start in very good form, winning the Dueling Grounds Oaks at Kentucky Downs last time out. But she ran well in the pucker up, and she looked good in her maiden win four back. I can see her making some noise in here. Me too. I, I'm a big fan of this horse. I wish that most recent win, the big win and the breakthrough last time, came at a different track. Uh, but I liked all of her races before that anyway. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time, Queen Elizabeth II Challenge Cup at Keeneland on Sunday. We're both going to hope that the number two elusive princess can transfer that good soft turf form to maybe a firmer turf course. She certainly ran on at Saratoga. Yeah, she was awful good in her stateside debut. Uh, and again, she was just really good in her three starts before that, too, even though she didn't win any of those races. And I, I just think she's really good. And I want to take a little bit of a shot against this morning line favorite, Maj, who was awesome the last time we saw her. Awesome last time, beat a top horse, but must deal with a layoff and must stretch out in distance. We'll both go 2-4 in the Queen Elizabeth II at Keeneland on Sunday. Good luck.